Hey folks, George Leoniak of New Geometry. I'm back here with another video that I'm uh, once again thrilled to be sharing with you. Um, this one is uh, kind of a follow up to the uh, sacred geometry for uh, the next millennium. And uh, this one, I'm going to continue to go into some of the same uh, drawing principles that I had there and expand it into some of the other uh, views. In a lot of my videos, I talk about, you know, the, the square view, um, the hexagon view, uh, and the pentagonal view. You know, these are also called edge view, face view. Well, based on my other discoveries in that video, I've expanded that out into a kind of unified uh, geometry that can contain all those views. So uh, I'm pretty excited to share this. I'm gonna also talk about the uh, hexapenta again, and also the subdivision of the circle with a method to do that uh, into 60 segments. So uh, stick around, uh, the last slideshow uh, had about 30 slides. This one's got 15, so I'm, maybe this video will be half of that. Um, so yeah, anyway, I'm gonna share the screen here and I'm uh, excited to, uh, get into this. Okay, well, I want to start here again, once again, it's always a good place to start with uh, some love. And um, yeah, you know, it's just really good to always acknowledge uh, the inspiration, you know, the field of sacred geometry is uh, so large, there's so many books, and there's so many great uh, current researchers out here are doing things. So as you get into this, uh, you, you, you tap into that sacred geometric field, and it's hard to piece together where that inspiration often comes from. Uh, but, you know, a while back, I remember seeing a post by Jane, and, you know, he really, you know, it's great the way he uses the uh, Jane 108, that is Jane, Jane Academy. I, I talk about him with the square root of, uh, uh, not the square root of pi, uh, the, uh, the true value of pi. He, uh, he likes to use these letters like, uh, you know, putting them on the points on here. And this, uh, you know, I was inspired to do this just, you know, in a similar way. So I'm thankful for his inspiration to get the LO, which is the large circle. Remember, now this is a phi circle, LO, divided by uh, VE will give you the 1.618. So like I said in the previous video, um, this is really kind of a, a new entry point for me in the sacred geometry. I base it on the drawing the seed of life first. And then um, I do that. You, you don't have to draw the circles, but I find it to kind of complete the story of uh, creation, let's just say. And then we're going to generate the phi out of that. So, you know, in order to do that, you draw the six around the one, and then you draw this line down the middle. And then you plant your compass needle at that intersection. So that should be half the length of that pedal. Put it up uh, uh, on the uh, top of the arc here. Swing it down at the top of this intersection. So that's why uh, you do the Vesica Pisces to get that vertical line. You swing that all the way down. And then that will give you a point over here, which is E. And then from there, you go back to the center. And then you draw the inner circle. So that red to blue, when you divide that LO to VE uh, by VE is 1.618. And uh, I found this to be uh, opening up a lot of doorways and I believe it's got many more hidden gems to discover. And I'm gonna share a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of the ones I'm finding today. One of these is over here um, because I didn't really recognize this, but, you know, until I was playing this with this for a little while. I don't know if this is a new method to, uh, to start to construct the Pentagon, um, but I, I found a very simple method, which is based on this root drawing. And I, this is gonna become you know, significant later on in this video um, because uh, I'm gonna start talking about the pentahexa union. And this is how I got there um, was through using this method that uh, allows you to divide the, the circle into 15, 30 or 60 uh, segments. So here is uh, the 72, ang 72 degree angle, which is the inner angle of the, uh, the Pentagon. Uh, so, you know, the, uh, the, the angle closest to the center. So if we go uh, over to this black line and go from um, here, I have C and uh, let's just say B, and you go up to there and you set your compass over here on the edge of the blue circle, you go up to the red circle. Now that's why we've established those red and blue circles. 
Then we just take our compass and swing it up over to where it intersects the blue line. And now we've created one edge of the Pentagon. If we follow that all the way through, we'll go over here and get the other edge um, length that we just draw in. And then now we can find those other points. Now, now I'll say this is uh, this drawing, I've done it a lot of times now, you know, uh, over a hundred physically drawing, not just on the digital uh, computer. And uh, it's a real good um, contemplative uh, journey to just see how accurate you are when you start to do your little tick marks around to get the rest. Don't be surprised if you try this by doing it by hand when you start to swing that compass around that it might be off. Believe me, the, the, it is, it does work here. It's, it is uh, a sacred geometric eternal principle that I'm showing you here. It's just that the little, little uh, nuances of using the pen, pencil and the, uh, the compass and just being slightly off will throw that off. So don't, don't get frustrated with that. Uh, it's kind of like, um, it's a meditation. So really concentrate on where the compass needle is, all the things. And you know when I line it up and it all works out, it's a really good feeling. So I'm starting off here again because um, I took this to kind of new levels for me. You know, this was kind of uh, like uh, really a unification. Uh, it was almost like my like a graduation ceremony. I feel like I completed some huge part of uh, like a like a mission or something to uh, to kind of create these. Uh, this design uh, opened up the ability not only to draw the um, the union of all the five platonic solids here here i'm just showing you the uh the icosahedron and dodecahedron to you know join together in in a, a, a compound way it uh it actually then allowed me to draw all the other views or not all every view but at least the, the, the other two big ones which are this uh the square view, I call it, you know, it's a, it's an edge view for both the Icasa and Dodeca here, but also the pentagonal view from the top, which is uh, also the, got the Dodeca and the Icasa in this. So these three, from the starting drawing technique of having that inner small phi circle in relationship to the larger one, my L-O-V-E, um, this now allowed me to do this uh, one design or one starting point. Uh, the square view has a few extra circles you have to draw in to get some of the points and extending the lines out, et cetera. But essentially I'm starting from the, uh, the same root place. And uh, you know, I'll, I'll talk about this in a little bit, but to me, just everything became one. It became a unified, um, all three perspectives are one. All three views are one and the same. Uh, that doesn't mean that these are all scaled proportionally, so that they're not, but you, we're starting from the same, same place. So I'm just going to walk through each of these on the digital and talk about uh, each of those individually, and, and we'll keep working along here. Um, so here's the, uh, the close-up of the, uh, the hexagon view, just to show you um, how I constructed on the computer. Check out my previous video because I extensively talk about the techniques of how to draw the dodecahedron uh, within this view. And I'm gonna extend this out into like the culminating form here of the unification of the dodeca and icasa together to create the rhombic tricontahedron. So these uh, rhombic triconahedrons are now, uh, and I'm gonna show you all gonna be within phi relationship on that rhombus face, meaning that this uh, icasa edge is one inch, the blue one, and that this uh, 0.618 is the, um, the dodeca edge here. So that's our kind of hexagonal view. And you know what I love about this, um, and, and let me just back up to the previous slide, uh, just to say this one more time. We start with the vesica Pisces, right? And we start with the vesica shape, and all three of these views that I'm showing you are contained within the, the vesica. Um, so it's like uh, the mother of all forms, you know? And one thing that came to my mind as I was, uh, you know, because it just floats in there, kind of bubbles to the surface, you know, is that this is often, this vesica is kind of like thought of maybe, uh, the, you know, God separating from itself and creating its, 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 the separation of God here. 
Um, but what it actually does is that the separation of those two creates the central circle, kind of like an egregore or a, 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 the Trinity is being represented here, the central circle. And that is like the start of creation there, right? It's, this is being birthed. And in, in that birthing process, what we're seeing is that all the five platonic solids are right in the center of creation, right? Everything is in the center of creation. But in order for that to kind of manifest, for those to come about, we start to do the other six circles around, right? Going back to my L-O-V-E, right? You need a little love to get into this. So we're starting to enter, if, you know, do the circles around, and then we're creating the L-O-V-E, and that creates the Phi Bay circle in the beginning. So this is kind of like uh, my, my creation uh, kind of synthesis here of how it's philosophical contemplative geometry is kind of merging kind of coming hand in hand with this um, at the center of uh, you know the, the vesica uh, it's like what came to me is like uh, there was no separation from God you know <laughs> what apparent kind of separation from God of the two vesica actually birthed creation here into existence and there's nothing separate you don't need to go outside of this central circle at all to have everything that you'd ever need within that sphere ever to be created. It's all right there, right in the beginning. So there's no separation from God. That's the way um, it moved through me in the, in, in the contemplation, philosophical, spiritual components to how this geometry starts to communicate with you. Um, so here we, we did the hexagonal view. I'm just going to not teach you all the drawing methods and techniques for all these, you know, maybe they'll be in an other separate videos where I go through the step by step. Um, but here's the, uh, the square view. So I call this the square view because, you know, you have one square uh, down here in the middle and there, there are other cubes in here, but it's primarily, um, you know, the, the box view. And as I said before, this you just have to put in some additional circles to get the some of the nodal points here and extend the lines out to get the dodec edge. You, as you'll see here, the this circle here, which is the uh, dark blue one, that is uh, this one is is kind of uh, emerging over the top of the uh, circle here, and, and I'm going to show you why that is in just a, just a moment. Um, so it's kind of containing the circle, the icosahedron, uh, and kind of poking through here, and that's all explainable in just a moment. Uh, as you could see, it will well be contained within the rhombic tricontahedron. And uh, so this is that view of that form from this view. So, I mean, that, that view, all we're doing here now, of course, is connecting the vertices of the icosa and the dodeca um, to create these diamond-shaped face. So it is the culminating form, and it is part of the earth grid, as I described previously, and expanded on that earth grid. Um, with that still at the heart with all the platonic solids kind of coming into harmony at the surface of that sphere. So we've uh, now, now I call this one the, uh, the pentagonal view because uh, you know, it's, a, it's a considered a vertex view, um, but when we're dealing with all the platonic solids, uh, they are all um, showing like for here, for instance, it's the dodeca is showing us its face because we see the pentagon. But for the icosahedron, it comes to the point. So that's the vertex. So, you know, I think um, I, I like using just the square, hexagonal, pentagonal view, because then it allows for all the forms to kind of be in there. And it is, it is describing, you know, somewhat of the kind of overall shapes, shape that we're working with, uh, uh, you know, from the, uh, the polygon perspective. So, um, Yes, so this is the method that uh, is new. I haven't shared this one yet. Uh, if you want to go back um, and check out building construction for the square view, I have a few of my previous videos that really talk about the square view, specifically the, uh, the Phi Yantra video. Uh, and the hexagonal view is the, the video of the geometry for the new millennium. And this one um, is the pentagonal view. And uh, this one I wanted to give a little extra uh, attention to in this one, because I haven't discussed this. So after I did the hexagonal view, I decided to go back and take a look at this and just figure out how I can bring, unite this in there. Now, it became so uh, utterly simple, you know, and that's, that's some of the, this geometry, sacred geometry for me it, it, in these last, you know, couple of weeks, it's slowly been building just towards this very kind of simplified, 
holistic model that at least works for me and that I would be thrilled that, uh, you know, children of today and adults and uh, elders or whoever, you know, um, it, you feel into this and see how uh, the simplicity of this. Um, so, you know, this is uh, the, the five base circles we've got. We've got it all in the seed of life. And now it's, it, it, you know, very simple because all we're going to do is now within the inner five base circle is we just construct the, uh, the, the pentagon for the dodecahedron. And now the outside edge of this is a, 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 a decagon, right? A 10-sided shape. So we're able to, with my method of uh, doing the, uh, the love drawing, all you have to do is do that on the opposite side. Let me back up. You just do that on the opposite side to get the 72 degree angle, do it on the other side. So now you've created the, the decagon. You, you'll see what I mean if you start to draw it. So you, you create the decagon and now you've got 10 shapes, 10 uh, sided polygon. And now you're just connecting the, the vertices with the inner and outer pentagons, right? Reverse, they're opposite. We got the smaller one and the larger one. The icosa one is the larger blue one. And now those will go to the vertex and the outer edge of the, uh, of the decahedron here is just connected from the inner phi circle to the outside of the decagon. And there we have it. That's how you do that view. Now I've seen this done before um, where you create the stellated dodecahedron and we can easily do that. And the little dodecahedron will be down in here while the larger icosahedron stays the same size. Um, it, it, but I, I was really aiming to do the, uh, the compound where they're all united, uh, the edges are crossing because I wanted to create this rhombic tricontahedron because it's kind of a, a synthesis a real synthesis of, of those two forms where when they're stellating off of one another, that's where you get that kind of expansive fractality. And, uh, you know, they're both beautiful ways to, um, to see how, uh, how, how Phi just manifests at, at all these levels in these drawings. So here's uh, the, um, here, here's the, the form, right? This little, uh, I forget what this is called, uh, who, who made it. Um, but, uh, you know, there's the view from here, um, that we're looking down on it. There's your hexagonal, uh, view. And now here is your, uh, your edge view, uh, not edge view, square view, right? So the hex, uh, pentagon view, hexagonal view, and I mean, not hexagonal, the square view, and then the, uh, the hexagonal view. And there's all the forms. And now I, I, with my geometry, sacred geometry, I love to create the template to be, um, contain the information necessary to create this. And all three of those major views are contained right here on the, on the screen that I'm showing you. But I just wanna say like, how do you know me sharing this? How do, how do I know this is true, right? I mean, um, you, you have to do some mathematics a, a little bit to just make sure that your geometry is matching up with the math. And as I've pointed out in my previous videos, that's quite important to me because I do like to go back and look at like, you know, is that the decahedron edge in the flower of life writers, Albic Dork's uh, drawing of um, the uh, pentagon, hexagon, fusion, pentahexafusion there, is that accurate? And, uh, you know, I continue to look at those things and then I make sure in my own drawings here that that is true. So this is the uh, rhombic tricontahedron. We're just gonna focus on that. And, you know, this is my little tool, my little trick um, that I like to use is you have to, in comparing the three views, first of all, when you draw them um, all at the same size circles, they're not gonna scale proportionally like back here. You have to, they're not, you'd have to come up with different starting circles for these to actually put them 2D like this. Um, I, I'm not too concerned at that. It's just that, you know, the, the one inch edge in here, it all changes. So you have to, um, I came in here and just scaled these all so that they would be proportionally the same. So you don't want to pick an edge that is sloping away from you because that's not going to be accurate. So you have to, you have to look at this form and be like, when I'm looking at it from this view, what edge is going to be the consistent edge that isn't sloping away, meaning that it's, uh, it's flat, it's, you know, flat to you. And for this view, we were going to focus on the rhombus first, 
is, you know, the length of the rhombus is the length of this diamond shape. That's a rhombus, you know, it's a square that's uh, been tilted, or kind of squished. So if that's a one inch length, then I want to find that in from the square view, because that's a pretty easy way to see it from the top of this diamond to the bottom. Where is that in this one? Well, on, on this pentagonal view, these outer, uh, the rosette here of these five diamonds that are going around are the one inch measurement. Okay, so we got it there, we got one inch. Now on our hexagon view, we've got the one inch right here at the center. These won't work because those are sloping away from you. So one inch flat across, perfect. We got that one now, we're all set. So we got the one inch for the rhombus length there. And now the dodecahedron is the 0.618 because once again, if you, you know, divide those, you get phi, uh, 1.618. So here it is, uh, the square view is like the way to get the easiest measurements I find, especially for these in-sphere and out-sphere ones. But at least um, for this, uh, this uh, rhombus uh, width here, we've got the 0 0.618. And here it is again over here. So that's the spot to find it. You wouldn't want to take this one, right? Because that is again is sloping away. But at this spot right here, that's the 0 0.618. So we're, we're all, we're golden there. Uh, <laughs> and we're golden here. We got the 0 0.618 going across that one because we don't want to take it where it's angled and sloping away, we've identified the spot where it's going to be parallel. So we've got all the rhombus faces are adding up. The one where it is a flat rhombus face is your square view. These, you have to kind of pick it, which ones are going to provide those measurements. Now, there's two other um, things that I want to point out here. And I mentioned this inner blue sphere. Now that's the one um, that here, these two spheres have not changed from the LOVE. And this is kind of the beauty of this. When you build this out to the rhombic triconterhedron, what happens is that outer sphere, the 1.618 is actually what's called the in sphere of the rhombic triconterhedron, which essentially means that 1.618 in sphere is inside and touching every single face of the inner rhombic triconterhedron, right? Because this is a flat face here and that's flat too. So that means that that whole first, um, the whole center, the whole first uh, thing of creation, the whole first uh, circle of creation there is encased completely within the rhombic triconterhedron. I just find that to be a, a really beautiful, which basically means every circle you could put around that because all those are 1.618 circles are all rhombic triconterhedrons. Um, so that's the in-sphere circle, but they're all touching, bumping up to one another. Um, when you put another rhombic triconterhedron on top, you have 1.618 touching 1.618 on either side. So um, these two views though, because the square view is giving you the actual uh, height, that changes for, for this one here. See, I, I had to draw in the, the new circle where that actually is within here. It's a little bit darker blue. The, the initial circle that I drew, and this is why I said you have to scale those other drawings is because uh, the, the 1.618, or it's not 1.618 anymore because that's the inner circle. Whatever that measurement is, I didn't, I didn't go back and check it now at this point, but it's a little bit larger because that's the one you do to do the drawing technique, okay? Um, and, and this is the same here. And it's just for like drawing purposes. It's not giving you the out sphere, the in sphere of any of those things. It's not until you do this kind of comparison that I'm doing of these three views where that in sphere really you can identify where it is. So now the in sphere on the hexagonal view is touching this interface to that interface because those are flat, uh, the Pentagon view, sorry, those are flat across from one another. So there's the in sphere. And now the in sphere on this one, these hexagonal faces that are going around in the hexagon view, those are flat too, right? So those are where the in sphere is now, okay? So these three these drawings, I scaled them all the same size. These are the same lengths all the way around. Um, and the actual drawing for doing the drawing of the hexagon view though, is this, this blue line over here um, on the outside, just below that little red line, okay? That's just 
like I said, again, reiterating just for the drawing purposes. Um, and now that we've done that, we go back to our square view because that once again, gives you the actual accurate dimensions. Cause now we're gonna go from the vertex of the icosahedron, which is touching the sphere and going all the way to the other edge. And that now gives us our inner, uh, inner length, you know, it, 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 vertice to vertice through the center of the icosahedron going through the center point. And now we know what that length is, okay? So now that's 1.902. And you're like, whoa, what's the 1.902? Um, as you get into sacred geometry, these numbers just kind of, um, I have a list, a running list of numbers that are like, ooh, that rings a bell. Let me just check that list. So 1.902 is, um, it's the square root of, uh, of the, the square of phi plus one. So if you, if you use the square root of that, um, that will give you 1.902. So it's, uh, uh, let's see, uh, don't worry about the math, but so once again, you're just gonna take the square root to get this on your calculator, the square root of um, phi uh, squared, plus one, and then you take the square root. I'm pretty sure that's the calculation, but like I said, I got a running list. So once again, phi, because these are all based on phi, they're found within here. Now remember that the, the square is in here, the cube, and now this circle, um, I jumped ahead. Let me, let me just back out, because I want to talk about the square, but I want to just make sure you see how that red circle here kind of goes around, and now uh, it's touching the vertices here, but as we look at this over here, now you'll see that the pentagon view, um, it looks like the, the rhombic tricontahedron is kind of floating down in there and isn't touching that. But that's like an optical illusion. It's an optical illusion that I've really enjoyed playing with over, over the times. Uh, and and this, this view helps kind of orient you to the, tr the true um, vertices touching. And this, We'll all have this touching just like this one. You've just rotated it. And it's very close in the hexagon view. It's just marginally a little bit larger than the, in, the, the, uh, the sphere for the drawing purposes or the circle for the drawing purposes. But the actual sphere is just around this edge over here. And that's the 1.902. So all three views have the same measurements. The only other one to talk about, and, and I had like a mini freak out before I did this, because I was going to go in and because I was, you know, part of me was like, oh, great, all these little inner circles are all one inch. So that's the one inch square because I looked at this one and I was starting to do all the squares and I drew a straight line across here to connect because that's how they're going to get the square on the inside of this. It's going to connect. And I was like, whoa, this, this circle's not fitting inside this cube. What? And I like did all the revisions, I checked it out, and then I realized. Oh, it's because I, I scaled this drawing down. These circles, as I'm saying, are just for drawing purposes for the hexagonal view and the pentagon view. This, even if you did it at one to 1.618, that's not gonna give you the accurate measurements of 1.618 for the rhombic faces that I'm talking about. All that's doing you is, is giving you the opportunity to, to draw these uh, accurately. The only view that does do it accurately to keep those proportions correctly to this, this sphere, which is inside the cube now, there's a cube in here, um, that will be touching from here to here, and that's the one inch. And this for the other one. So those, uh, the, that's where the drawing and the actual uh, drawing technique overlays on top of the, um, on top of the actual dimensions of the 3D reality form. I know that was a very long slide to go through, I apologize on that, but these are the types of things that I go through just to make sure that I'm delivering you something that um, is based on the sacred eternal principles. And if there are any errors in this, I'm definitely open to um, being corrected. Uh, and once again, rhombic triacontahedron, it's got 30 faces, the 32 vertices, 12 of those vertices come from the icosahedron, the other uh, 20 come from the dodecahedron, and uh, it's got uh, 60 edges. I should have double checked that. I'm pretty sure that's the, true. That could be the one error on the page. Um, uh, so let's see here. We've got to, um, 
I just I just removed all those lines because in all the the um, you know the, the the hash marks here to show the measurements the bracks brackets um, because there's just some beauty in the form just by themselves and uh, and and uh, you know I, I love that all three views have come together through that one form that I was showing you, uh, the one creative process that started at the beginning. And now we have that pentagon, hexagon, and square view. It's kind of like you, you can't really have a septagon view or a, an octagonal uh, view of these forms. Uh, a triangular view, you, you know, what's that for the triangular view? Well, it's part of the, the cubic view or something. So, you know, these are like the big three views that we work with. I mean, you can turn them a little bit in different ways. And that's the beauty of life. It's not just three views. But, um, you know, these when we're, we're doing sacred geometry, these are really kind of like the big three um, that uh, I kind of tend, tend to gravitate to regularly. And, and when you visit Wikipedia, you'll, you'll see if you look up rhombic tricontahedron, these are like the, the big three. Okay, so um, Albert Durer, I just wanted to uh, connect with his work because I did bring him up. And I, I definitely just wanted to like double check because I know the pentahexa is really, you know, part of this uh, flowering of uh, consciousness, you know, pentahexa is going to become more and more part of uh, our understanding from the science uh, things as of course it's part of uh, the, the carbon 60 um, that I was showing in another video and foundations of life and bringing these two together. So I, I just double check this again, um, doing the drawing again uh, of the way his method is, which connects the lines from the, the, the bit of the hexagon edges here. And you draw the line straight up through this center spot here, connecting over to the other circles. So you only really have to do the three circles uh, that are all the same size. And I guess that's what you know some people really like about this method is, well, great, we just keep three circles the same size. That's really cool. And that is a very nice method uh, for simplicity's sake. Um, yet when we do come up here and connect to this spot, uh, I did check the angles again, and we do still get the ones uh, 109.2 degrees, which means that this is 108.4 for this angle over here. Um, so when we take the measurements for this whole angle, uh, because it's a 360 all the way around, when we do that, you know, we got a 131.6 angle up on this kind of uh, dihedral angle on the outside here between the fusion of those two. So um, this also, you know, this is my kind of this morning's revelation because there was kind of like one more missing piece that I knew I needed to add and this was it. So this is only, you know, hours old, but everything became so much more simple uh, in this method too, because yes, this uh, does, this is accurate. You know, uh, you just have to come about it a different way. You know, the, the hexapenta fusion from this view, and I guess this is what I also wanted to kind of come in uh, and, and, and just do a little bit of the correction on is, this is a beautiful image in drawing. And yes, I did mention in the other one, I love seeing the, the pentagon and the hexagon fused over top of one another like that. Um, but we need to go about it maybe in a different way with different method of drawing. It has quite a few more steps. And I'll show you what those are in the next slide. It's going to look like a little bit of a mess, but I just want to show you that when you do just do the seed of life, once again, we're, we're back at the seed of life. And this is what this drawing is also kind of uh, attempting to do here. When you do start in the seed of life, those, uh, no, th those circles do pass through that point. But when you do the line to kind of connect up to that spot, it doesn't pass through that spot. It's ever so slightly. I mean, if you're doing this with the pencil and drew this, you really probably wouldn't be able to tell. But when you do do the calculations that I'm showing you here, it is slightly off enough to give you the angles that aren't correct. But to me, that does have implications that I'll talk about um, because these are not just... Um, uh, you know, drawings that uh, are just meant for like a blueprint to make stuff, they affect consciousness and they carry out significance and kind of meaning with them of what does this really mean? Um, I know Jane uh, talks about the technology and life, the pentagram being the life uh, and uh, the pentagon life oriented and uh, technology oriented uh, hexagon. And the methods you go about doing these two um, is one, this one, you start with the hexagon. 
And that means that the hexagon is the first thing you start with to draw the pentagon on top of it, right? So basically you're saying you're, you're conforming the pentagon, which is life to the edge of technology. And the method I'm gonna show you reverses that. And it puts life uh, first and that guides technology rather than the other way around. So here's my uh, complete method of, uh, you know, with all the lines on there, which would have to be teased apart. But once again, I'm gonna show that starting with the, uh, the L-O-V-E, uh, two circles at the beginning, and that's what these black flower, uh, black seed of life, uh, seed, these seed of life circles are here. Okay, these are going around seed of life. So we've got two seeds of life in here. Uh, one over here, which is gonna give us the, the hexagon later. But the first one is this one here, which is orienting those petals up. And that's just part of the method, once again, to show you to draw the, the pentagon. Because now what we're gonna do, um, and of course, we, we, we also had the vesica, vesica kicking us off and starting the whole thing here. So the vesica, so this is the creation, the vesica, this is the, the kind of moving apart to see itself, the egregore created in the middle, the third entity, which, um, which is where everything is in creation being created in out of this central form. Uh, and you need to do the, the, this kind of seven days creation around that. And then what happens is you create that uh, life, you create the pentagon shape in there. And now that pentagon edge, rather than the hexagon edge, because the hexagon edge is what we based the previous drawing off of, this pentagon edge now uh, dictates how this hexagon is gonna be drawn. Because now all you need to do is just draw your um, seed of life off of those edges to give you the um, rest of the, uh, the, the points to create the hexagon that is uniting the uh, pentagon and hexagon. But it's, this is the important part, it's the life, the pentagon uh, shape that edge is the one that allows the proper size um, seed of life of the blue ones, which are creating the, the new technology hexagon. It allows that to come through and actually touch the appropriate spot where it meets the Pentagon. So this is, um, I know there's a lot more going on in this, but once again, uh, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like this. It's like, what happens when technology is, is trying to alter life? Well, it can be get distorted, right? So if we start with the technology view like over here and we say, okay, we do technology and then we go out here, well, that little 131 to six and 108, well, that's a little bit of a distortion, right? But how about if we start and put life forward, right? And have technology be grown off of that and then we don't have any distortion. So this is kind of the philosophical component of this. I, I wouldn't say that all of a sudden, because we, we do this drawing, all those issues are gonna be solved. But remember, this is how we teach a sacred geometry and has also this philosophical spiritual component as well as the details. And when we start to produce the images with the correct proportions, because our eyes are feeding on this sacred geometric um, uh, food, well, what is a little of that difference doing? Now, of course, all our hand drawings are always gonna be a little slightly off, but when we look at these highly detailed technical drawings uh, with, with the lines that the computer is doing, which are everywhere now, it, it is nice to see them all line up because it really shows that those sacred eternal principles do apply and they do show up. So I'm happy to go and look at Albert Durer's work again here and just be like, yes, that is totally accurate. We just have to come about it by creating the, we got to start off with the L-O-V-E at the center and go from there. Um, so I just want to revisit that. And now one other piece that I want to just uh, touch on here is we had that marriage of the Pentagon and Hexagon um, sharing the same point. Okay, so that when I did this in the previous video, I had both Hexagon and Pentagon here at this point. And this little space between the edge of the hexagon to the edge of the pentagon created a 12 degree uh, angle, which subdivided this whole thing into uh, 30 segments, all right? Um, you know, uh, I, after doing a little more uh, research and, and being informed by some well-known geometers, 
Um, there are some, um, like, like in causometry, I didn't even, I didn't really check that book out. I haven't even read it full, fully. I've looked at some pictures in there, but um, in this book, let me see if I can find it uh, here. I'll keep it open and show you at the end. Uh, there's a whole section in here on how this relates to music and the phi ratio, kind of like the amen being connected to this tritone, which is based on the subdivision of the circle into 30 segments. So, you know, like I said, when you tap into the field of sacred geometry, all these beautiful um, perspectives and researchers into this field who are really touched by it, you're in that field. So you, you, it's hard to know who's is who's. And, and, and I'm always so, uh, apologize to anybody if I haven't acknowledged any of your work and I might be covering it. Uh, I'm sure that anybody who's passed away, uh, you know, has contributed to this, must be thrilled that it's continuing to be moved forward by all these awesome geometers that are out here now. So uh, apologize to any of them too, but I'm continuing to move forward and look at this pentahexa union again. And, you know, after, uh, you know, I kind of came upon this by accident almost, in the drawings and, and every time you, you make a, a alleged accident in sacred geometry, like maybe you put a line in the wrong place, you think it's the wrong place, take a good look at it because it might open up something that you're missing because there, there isn't any real accident in any of this stuff. Uh, many of my mistakes have led to the, like the biggest epiphanies that I've gone along once I start to follow out what that little line or circle was teaching me that I thought I put in the wrong spot. So here we've got the, the marriage of the pentagon and the hexagon and where they're not sharing the same point. And, and it's no different than showing you the, the L-O-V-E drawing that I showed you before, the love drawing. It's just, we're gonna reorient how the, the um, which way the, um, the seed of life is drawn. So it's not changing the, the basic structure at all. But here, when they're not sharing the same point, I identified that there was, a spot down here uh, where we have the pentagon and the hexagon um, connecting at the edge from this, this type of view. And now we have uh, angle B and C here, angle B, A, C uh, equals uh, the six degrees, right? So the previous one I showed you had the 12 degree um, and now we've got 60. We just divided the circumference of the circle into 60. And that was, I didn't see that one coming. Um, so that's really cool. And I, I haven't seen that in any books, but I'm sure it's probably out there somewhere. So don't want to step on any, any more anybody else's toes. Um, but this is how you could divide the, um, the, the circle into 60 segments. And I mentioned in my previous video, I talk about the sexagismal math. And, um, and like I said, the, the researchers now are really going for this. And, you know, I might seem like a, a little guy over here, but in the in the bigger picture, um, like Robert Grant, who's you know got a lot of followers in sacred geometry, wrote this book Philomath. I decided to thumb through it last night a bit. He's got a whole chapter on sexagismal math and how it relates to uh, you know the compass, and of course this is now going back to uh, Sumeria and Babylonia. So we're talking like three millennium ago, and much further, I'm sure. So how do they, you know, speculative here now, how do they divide the circle into the 60 segments? And why has the 60 segments so, been so important? Well, who knows how they did it or how they came about, but here's a quite simple method to show you how we can. Um, we just put the pentagon and the hexagon in this orientation, and now we've got this one little segment right here, which can do that. Now, I always like to kind of then, you know, the lines start going crazy on the page or on the, 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 the computer. And, uh, you know, I just start drawing in, you know, all the shapes and just seeing what happens. This one, um, you know, is where I started to do that a bit. And we've got um, the pentagon and the hexagon. And, you know, you'd have to zoom into this to see, but now we have different, different angles, which I'm highlighting here, especially on the inner ring. So wherever there's a red or a blue are places where the inner ring is also showing that it's either divided into, for instance, the 30 division is G-O-H, and that's on the inner ring being divided right here by these G, O, and H. That is dividing that into 12 on the inner ring. Whereas also 
What I found to be very interesting um, is this one right here, the actual petal of the seed of life that's coming through here. So that's the seed of life petal. Remember, that's six around one. When it crosses the line of the inner circle, the inner phi circle, what happens there is uh, E, uh, E, O, and F. I put that over here, but let's just pretend that's here, these two blue dots. E, O, and F, well, that divides it into a 24 degree segment, which divides it into 15. So even the seed of life is interacting with that inner circle and giving us a, 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 a division of the inner circle that, in my mind, is not just uh, random. I mean, we've got all these divisions of 50, 30, and 60. And of course, the inner division of 60 is also in here because we can do it between. Um, C and D right here between the hexagon and the uh, pentagon. So um, just another very rich drawing. I, I added in both the pentagon circles that would be off of those and the hexagon. And, and they all just show up and kind of do their thing on their own without any uh, manual manipulation on my part. All I have to do is just pay attention, observe, be curious and ask the questions. And, and dig into it and look at it a little, little bit more to see what is being revealed and then just uh, find the best way to, to kind of share that with you. Um, so we also have, um, I, I'm just gonna revisit this again because in my prior video, I talked about the 60 digit repeating Fibonacci sequence. Um, that's where in this, this type of the sequence, what happens is uh, it, it, for whatever number it is, no matter how large it is, you just take the last digit of that string of numbers and then you just plot it, you know, all those numbers around. And then every 60 of those you do, you'll once again come back to zero and then continue that same process in, into infinity going on and on and on with the Fibonacci. Now, of course, the Fibonacci sequence um, as it starts off at the beginning is, is not as close to phi, but as it goes further and further into it, it then, you know, oscillates around phi very, very closely at the larger numbers. Uh, and it doesn't take too long to get there. Um, so I, in the previous video, I, I showed you this, but I didn't actually have this measurement right here that was built off of the pentagon and hexagon. What, what I said was, well, now that we've done 30 and we draw a bunch more circles, well, those circles where they interlap, we can draw another line through there. Now we actually have in this drawing, this is showing you that now fusion of pentahexa not only gives you 30 or 15, um, it gives you 60. And, and then we can plot those on the Fibonacci, the Fibonacci numbers on there. I had this on there last time. And, and of course, these are all seeds uh, for like other people who are highly deep in the mathematics more than I, even with this Fibonacci, there's some brilliant people out there who can look at that and, uh, and go with it. And then also people who are into the energy-based things and, and how this applies, you know, the 60 Hertz um, it, as Nikola Tesla did all his calculations to come up with the best frequency for alternating current. You know, he came up with uh, 60 Hertz as, as, as the uh, reason, uh, the, the, the best frequency for that. Um, but that's not widely adopted. You know, after doing a little research, it seems like in Europe and other countries, they've adopted a 50 Hertz. Uh, and then that's only for alternated current. And then you have DC current and actually direct current, you know, is more, uh, it seemed to be used more with like solar panels and things like that to have that direct current flow rather than the alternating current. So these are just all seeds that I do a little bit of research on as I do this. I'm not as highly technical involved. I just really love the purity of the geometry and working with that and seeing how it connects to all these things. But people are really into that, you know, follow it up and uh, if I'm, Enlighten me with some comments in that so I can learn some more about this. Um, but my, my big thing I think that I really appreciate and enjoy about sacred geometry is, is really going into the, uh, you know, that, that field, that, um, uh, that the collective, and, and then pulling out, working with the forms, and then figuring out how to draw all that stuff and come up with the techniques that allows it to do it more accurately if it is, is slightly less accurate um, and figuring out how to do those um, 2D drawings that represent the 3D forms. It's a really, uh, a really impassioned about that element of things because I, I believe some of these techniques that I'm showing here are so simple that if they were introduced 
to um, you know the young kids in a little grade school or something like that. They would really get sacred geometry in a way. And then those new designers of, uh, of our future, you know, our creators, our new creators, the little mini creators, they're building with this, you know, pentagons and hexagons and seeing the fusion, seeing the different angles. And they've got these simple techniques that allow them to enter into it. And yes, it all starts with just drawing circles and squares and triangles. I mean, it's the stuff that the kids all play with. And that, you know, my son and I built all these forms when we were, when he was younger and, and we build all this stuff and I continue to do it um, with them. Um, so I just think it's really important for um, the simplicity of the drawings to also then reflect what it is we're gonna be building. Um, and that pulls the sacredness into it and it moves it beyond just geometry for geometry's sake, just like building more stuff, you know, the tables and chairs and all that, but then infuses that sacredness within all that stuff. And, and you know, who knows what, what will, will play out um, and how it affects the larger consciousness. But this is a kind of culminating uh, fusion drawing from the vertex view, which is now looking straight down at this. And I've now taken, just like I did in the previous drawings that I did, where I did a 30 circles going around. Well, now, because I've subdivided the inner circle into 60, well, now I've done uh, 60 of these circles all the way around. And now that is going to allow us to divide this into 120 segments if we were to draw straight lines through here, dividing the whole circle into um, three degree segments. So there's this continual theme here of this three and six and not, you know, showing up through this, all based on this uh, fusion of the hexapenta uh, geometry. Um, and this is important too, because in the previous uh, slideshow I did, I, I actually talked about Metatron's apple and Metatron's flower and that drawing of this, this torus, right? Now this is an equal spin type of design here because you can do this all with like uh, actual golden spirals. The technical, uh, you, you, you know, I don't have the, uh, the software to do that or even doing that by hand is quite difficult. Um, but that's what nature does anyway. And that's when you, when I overlay this over top of the apple, you see the apple, ha the inner core is starting to have that slight spin like a pine cone, right? And even the inner core of the apple because nature's pattern is taking this kind of, you know, uh, 60, 60 circles here and gazillion, gazillion more, you know, to start to just slightly put it into the fib into the uh, phi ratio, golden spiral, and slightly, you know, move it because that's how things continue to grow and evolve and move and spiral up and around. So, you know, now I just decided to put that over because I mentioned in the previous video, I said it looked like an apple. So I cut the apple in half, um, which is like a torus, right? And I said, well, this is now the vertex view of the icosahedron. And in my, uh, my uh, one of my videos, it's all, um, it's all sacred geometry at all scales, thank God. Um, I talk about how the vortex of the torus being associated with the top of the icosahedron, and that's how it fits over the top of the earth grid and all those things. Well, instead of looking at this like I did previously from the hexagonal view, you know, which would have the face uh, view of the icosahedron, this now puts the vertex over top of the apple. So this, I believe, is a more accurate representation of the kind of you know inner geometries that are you know in this design that are all fused in there and the rhombic triconchohedron's in here and there's the pentagon a pentagram star at the middle um, and the edge of that uh torus envelope kind of goes to the outside there's also in here it's hard to see with all the other lines i noticed when i cut the apple there are 10 light colored dots around the inside of the apple that i never noticed before once again showing that the five geometry went out to this uh the the decagon um, around the outside. So it's just, um, it, to me, really beautiful to see kind of all that um, kind of come together. And um, yeah, so that was another, you know, kind of uh, vortex spiral into where sacred geometry has been leading me. Um, I, some more new discoveries in there, you know, want to honor all the, uh, the, the great teachers of sacred geometry that are out there. And um, yeah, I'm really excited. I think these are exciting times. Uh, I think the pentahexafusion and 
the, um, the simplistic drawing model that I'm kind of showing here, how it brings all three of those views together uh, is, um, you know, is a revolution, revolutionizing um, uh, technique. And uh, I just love, literally love the LO divided by VE to start at least the way I like to enter into my drawings of sacred geometry and just showing how much that more that's unlocked. So I hope you appreciated this video. Thanks for taking the time to watch it. And um, as always, I'm looking forward to see what the next new discoveries are. There might be more in this avenue, but there's plenty of more that um, I have to present on uh, other subjects that I've kind of put on the back burner for a little bit. So uh, yeah, much love to you and uh, have a great rest of your day and uh, peace.